Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at a premium tier 7 Japanese heavy cruiser, Maya. This is the map Islands of Ice, and this game is fantastic. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Uh, so the Maya is a brand new premium that was just introduced. This is the build that I'm using right now. Main armament mod 1, lower chance of flood and fire, improved main battery accuracy, faster rudder shift for the commander, incoming fire alert, focus fire AA, adrenaline rush, concealment expert, Radio location, improved AA damage output continuous, and then superintendent. I'm using my legendary commander, Yamamoto, because this is a premium, and that is one of the benefits of having a premium. The other benefit of having a premium is, honestly, having really great gameplay that wasn't previously available at this tier, and in the case of the Japanese heavy cruiser line, there is nothing like this. At tier 7. This is exactly as you would expect an Otago to appear in tier 7 bracket. And it's very fun for that. I really enjoy the forward launch torpedo systems. They work really well on the Otago. And of course they work well on the ship as well. And we're going to get a chance to hopefully make use of it. Now at the beginning of the match, it's a little dangerous. Because we spawn outside of the ring, we can't initially contest, so I decide to sail towards the nearest contestable point. And I want to make sure that we indeed are contesting. And obviously, while I'm sailing in this direction, we bump into a couple enemies, which we can easily fire our gun. Now, one of the first things that you'll notice that is unique about the Maya versus the Otago is the main battery reload. The Maya has eight 203 millimeter guns on four gun turrets which is definitely less than the 15 that you get with the otago so it would stand to reason that main battery reload would be something that the player could access to compensate for the lack of gun alpha it has a lot going for it so yeah you, you do end up giving a little bit of gun alpha which you know that's just how it goes sometimes but what you get is the ability to launch torpedoes forward of your ship. Admittedly, they don't have 10 kilometer range. They only have 8 kilometer range. So most likely you will be spotted. But there are times where you can maneuver around an island and send the torpedoes and maybe slow a target that's coming towards you. There's a lot of different uses for torpedoes that can be launched forward. It's a huge upgrade over the mainline Miyoko, which is the tier 7, and it has the butt launch torpedoes. So I think that, you know, as a Japanese cruiser fan, you probably are not going to be disappointed because you can actually make use of some of these torpedoes at some point. So, you know, a win in that column. It obviously has good equipment. I cannot select anything other than the fighter. You can choose between defensive AA and hydroacoustic. Because you can't swap out of the fighter, it might be in your interest to go hydro and then fighter. If you could have the fighter swapped out, well, obviously you would do that because it would extend the gun range that you would have access to. The default gun range, eh, it's not an impressive amount. It is a workable amount, but it definitely doesn't stand out compared to tiers 9 and 10, which can obviously enhance further the main battery range. Because it's a tier 7 and it lacks the spotting aircraft, you really have to just work with it. It's got good maneuverability, though, and that's obviously a trait of Japanese cruisers. That's just what they do. They actively maneuver very well. So incorporating my play style into the ship, you know, it, it works pretty well. And enemy Jean Barr sailed a little bit too close to the sun there, and he ran smack into the island. We lit him on fire enough that he is forced to use damage control, and hopefully we can follow up with some more fires. Also, a cool trait of the ship it actually has a heel. It's a cruiser at tier 7 with a heel. Very few actually are available that have this type of trait, and it is a very valuable trait indeed. That heel alone would make this ship a hugely popular tier 7 to me, but having on top of that the option to send forward torpedoes and main battery reload, it really seals the deal of this being an outstanding Japanese premium cruiser that, you know, we haven't really had access to. There's not a lot going on with this particular playstyle. And what? Gets a Citadel on me, gets a Citadel on the Charles Martel. What did he have to roll to get that kind of luck? Hmm. 
We lose a couple friendlies. Teammates are able to capture, but the enemy is actively capturing the middle point. We still are contesting the, well, I guess the inner ring is, well, the inner, the center point is being contested. The middle ring is being contested, and the outer ring is under the enemy's control. So it's a tough game right now, just because there's so much that we are giving up. And I'm just trying my best to incorporate the torpedoes, because they are 8 kilometer range. I do end up having to get a little bit closer than I would like. And the friendly Fletcher sends his torpedoes forward to the position, and it does look like ours will get there first. However, it is a convenient battleship size gap that the enemy can avoid completely, and instead flood out to the Fletcher. Great. I really felt like I used my health. Worth it there. Nah, not at all. But one down. Plenty to go. We are detected by an enemy Sims that does have direct line of sight. And he's going after the friendly submarine. And uh, I'm going to attempt to assist a little bit with my guns. The reload is slow. But if you've played the Otago, you're used to it. The guns are accurate, and again, if you've played the Otago, you're used to it. And this is definitely for Otago fans. And, you know, if you haven't had a chance to try the Otago, and you've played the game for a long time, and you like Japanese cruisers, well, what's your problem? Why aren't you trying the Otago? It's a great ship. It's not quite the same as this ship, but it has the heel. It has the four launching torpedo system. It doesn't have main battery reload, but it doesn't need it with the amount of alpha broadside that it has. So at this stage of the game, not looking good. We lost five friendly ships to the enemy's one. We are quite literally only contesting the outer ring and we are in trouble. But Missouri gets a kill, which is good. And I can very easily jump over to the middle ring which would also be a contest. And that would only leave the center available for the enemy to benefit from, but we will go there soon enough. We catch sight of this enemy DD, get a little bit shot. No harm, no foul. Unless you include the New Orleans broadside. Good damage there, New Orleans. Enemy Soyuz, very low health. Traversing my guns. Also, we are re we are recontesting the middle ring. And hopefully we can kill him with the salvo. Location, location, location. Nope. Friendly is able to take him out. And uh, two of the three rings are being contested, with the outer ring actually being captured by our team. So that would be really nice if we could capture it and then continue going forward. We've kind of normalized this game. It's six to four on ship kills. One of the ships that I would love to kill is that Fletcher. And he is, of course, hiding around that island. So... We're going to go with the next best thing, which, of course, is this Jean Bar. And the Jean Bar is, you know, he's moving forward towards his position. And I was worried that maybe he took a shot at us, but no, and he actually took a shot at someone else. And, in fact, the shot came from the Italian with his sap. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're doing okay. The center point is being contested. The middle ring is uncontested. And uh, the center point is not going to be contested very long since the Missouri is so low. I saw the Asashio dealing with the submarine. I was hoping that I could potentially move to assist and knock him out completely. It would be kind of a surprise because the submarine has to go to depth. He's not going to see me approaching him. The only way he would know is, of course, if he was close enough to the surface that now he was being detected. As it stands, it didn't work out. We got detected by the enemy, and we are in fact spotted for long enough that the enemy Italian can fire his sap. But we are able to line a sight with the island, and I figure, okay, well, let's let's just try again on the Jambar. Maybe we can set him on fire. I don't think that he'll ever get in this area. And uh, definitely with 8 kilometer range, the torpedoes are not as useful as you would hope if you're coming over from the Otago. But you can still make good use of that when the enemy is pushing against your position. And because of the nature of it being midship versus the rear, either in reverse or, you know, moving forward or away, you have at least 
50% of your torpedoes available to use, which is a godsend compared to the main line, which has all of it facing in the rear. Just the thing that you have to deal with. But can't find the sub, so we're going to move back towards the center. This game is pretty fast approaching a loss, so we just have to make a play. And first things up, enemy JB shows his ugly French face in the center. He actually is looking away from us. So I'm going to use that to my advantage to try and do some chip damage against him. Now, the friendly Asashio was capable of detecting the enemy submarine as he tried to surface to regain some power. And he's not going to be able to do that. In this moment, I could have continued going back towards the Asashio, but I felt like if we could meet up with the battleship, I could keep the battleship alive, work against whatever happens to go against him, and maybe we can cap and contest the middle area of the map. Because if we don't do that, the game is over. So it's very important that we actually contest and get kills in this action. Versus if I were to go after the submarine and I didn't get a kill, I would be losing on points rapidly. But because I came this direction, I can not only damage, but I can also contest. So you want to make sure your action that you take is the most optimal, efficient. Uh, if you're hoping to, obviously, win the game. If you don't want to win the game, well, who cares? Just go for damage. But I'm trying to win. So, center ring about to be captured, which is good. Two of the three. All that they are gaining is from the center point. We are doing good damage to the Jean Bar, who is attempting to try and stop this, of course. But because he has 32 all over his ship, very easy for the 203s to pin. And we're looking for some fires. Friendly very nearly kills him, but follow-up does indeed the sap secondaries, which is nice. So now we have to decide, do we go for the center point, or do we go after the enemy DD that is potentially shadowing my friendly battleship? Now we do know that someone is actually capturing the outer ring. So at the very least, I think the best play here is to contest the outer ring knowing that my friendly battleship is outside of it. If we at least contest it, we will deny them an easy capture, and he will have to eventually change his playstyle. So as we're sailing this direction, I was thinking to myself, well, our friendly battleship is spotted until just now. Because he is spotted until just now, he could actually use that to his advantage. The enemy doesn't know exactly what he plans to do, so what I was trying to communicate in this moment I really wanted a sandwich. We need to pincer this enemy and force him to actually be spotted one way or another. And he does indeed get forced to be spotted. He leaves the outer ring, goes to the center. We knock him out. And the middle ring is actually being captured outside of that enemy. So that does tell us a couple things. It's not the cruiser. It's not the submarine. And it's probably not the other DD. So one of the two DDs is close enough to our position that he's able to actively capture and contest. And I was a little worried, but we do have our friendly battleship. So by keeping the battleship alive, I have a friendly ship that's basically about a kilometer or two behind me in my, my uh, sailing. So what I envision in this, as I enter the center point, the friendly will actually enter the intermediate ring. And he will contest or capture, and I will contest or capture the center ring. And we actually have our friendly Asashio, who's in the outer ring. So all three points are actually being contested or captured by my team in this moment, and a fantastic play by everyone. It looks like the Asashio is trying desperately to stall as much as possible to prevent the outer ring from being captured, which... I applaud him for doing that. He has taken these guys on a wild goose chase. But it's still a loss at this point. We still need to make plays. So the only way we can make plays is by, hopefully, getting a kill on this cruiser and maybe bumping into something else. I don't know. At this point, I'm just hopeful that anything can break from this. And as we confirm capture the center, which is good, the outer ring is actively working against us. So we really need to either get a kill or contest uh, on it. 
So I decided to sail in this direction. And oh my god, the enemy cruiser. He zigged when I thought he would zag. So we get a little bit of a chip damage here. He also gets some chip damage. And, you know, the best thing that you could possibly have on your starboard side. Enemy submarine, of course, conveniently able to punish. So I just have to sail as intelligently as I can. If you know the direction that the submarine ping is coming from, you want to probably sail away from it. Most likely, homing is coming in an, a very short amount of time, and conveniently, our friendly is able to spot this enemy DD, but I have to focus on this. I cannot die. I must force these to pass by harmlessly, and we angle just enough, and then we cut the throttle. It will pass helplessly past the ship. Completely useless torpedo send until the next one. Friendly Asashio is making his way over to the outer ring, which, you know, we would definitely benefit from that. I am working over here trying to figure out where this enemy is located. Radio location tells me the enemy DD, but that is not the important thing here. The enemy cruiser, of course. I recognize we have to get the kill here, so I activate my main battery reload. And just like that, enemy cruiser knocked out. And that was the last main battery that we've got available. Friendly Battleship is going to take some significant submarine torpedoes, but he is approaching with his smoke. So he's able to quite slyly get into a position of power. The Asashio, meanwhile, is recapturing the outer ring. We've got a really great positional advantage here. If the Friendly Battleship continues into the intermediate ring, then we are not going to lose anything, and the, the points will continuously tick up for our team. So just fantastic play by all three of my teammates, well, me included, to juggle the capture points so that the enemy wouldn't get any more points than they already did. It was a really great opportunity by our team, and they didn't squander, and I'm just so proud of them. We get a good damage on this guy he's looking for the kill because if they get a kill on the battleship it gives them a little bit longer chance to bring this back but obviously he's overextending we get one more nice accurate salvo friendly battleship follows up and is that going to be the game i think that is the game all that's left is that dirty dirty submarine there's barely any health on my team but we've got three ships to their one and we've got all three bases so just like that we're going to win this game, and that was fantastic.